All right, so now we're moving on to my favorite part of the project, which is color sanding and polishing. And this is where you actually make the finish. Uh, as long as you put enough clear on, which I have, uh, you could have a dog fall into the paint. And as long as you have enough clear, you can sand it out and still look great. But uh, this is like, a, you know, you're like a gemologist at this point. You know, you're taking a rough, flawed surface and through your work and your technique, uh, you're polishing it into a beautiful gem and your result end result is going to be usually directly correlated with how much work you chose to put into it or how much work you didn't want to put into it. So traditionally the way this is done is lots and lots and lots of hand sanding. Okay. You know, first you start with 800 grit. Look at that. That's beautiful. Right. Okay, and then you can't feel your elbow anymore, right? Then you move on to a thousand grit, right? And at that point, you know, your wife hates your guts because you're never in the house. You're always out with that damn truck. You never spend any time with her. Then you move on to 1500. At this point, you can't feel any of your arm because you're completely numb. You've been out in the garage for six weeks sanding the damn thing, right? And you want to brag to all your friends that you blocked it out. So here's your stinking block, okay? I hate these things, right? No offense to the people who make the blocks. Then when you're all done, you know, then you get the dead sheep on the buffer and you spend weeks buffing this thing. And when you're all done, you got swirl marks all over the place. Don't worry about it because there's 10,000 products that you can buy uh, to try to take the swirl marks out. Uh, but I'm not going that way. I'm actually using a different product on this one. Used it once before and it's actually fantastic. And here's what it is. Lifesaver. Ready? There you go. Trizac clear coat sanding discs, 1500 grit. Now I'm not sponsored. I'm just telling you I use this stuff. It's pretty fantastic. It's expensive, but when you start wet sanding this truck and you don't actually wet sand it, you, you dampen it with a mist. So uh, about six, six discs will do this whole truck, believe it or not. And the really cool thing about it is, there you go. Here's a picture of the disc. And the really neat thing about it is, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but the surface of this, if you look at it under a microscope, is actually, it look like little pyramids. So these discs last forever. They last forever. I literally use three discs to do the whole side of the truck. This, this side has already been 1,500 uh, and then 3,000 with the Trizac paper. And it, it's already shining, okay? Now... The second step is this stuff here. You see this case here, it comes with uh, five 3,000 grit discs, five 8,000 grit discs. Uh, kind of expensive, but here's the thing. Um, I used one 3,000 grit disc for this whole side and it's still working. So this stuff lasts forever and it, it, it gets rid of the back-breaking hand sanding. So, really cool, really cool. Now, typically, when you watch videos, you're gonna see guys use the Air DA. But I'll tell you what I'm using. I'm using my detailing DA buffer. Uh, this is a long throw buffer, okay? You could use whichever one you want. But I'm using this, it's a long throw, and it leaves a gorgeous finish, okay? So, part of this is experimentation, but uh, the other part of it is using what the product is supposed to be. And so far, this side of the truck was 1500 Trizac, then 3000. Uh, and after you're done with the 1500, you can see all the little defects that you need to eliminate, okay? I had a couple runs, I had some gnats, uh, I had a small bird. Uh, okay, just kidding about the bird, no bird. But, uh, you know, you basically sand that, the little detailed stuff out, all the little flaws out, you can see plainly after you go over with 1500, anything that's standing out, you see it. You can get rid of it, then you move on to 3000 and it's already shining, it's already shining. Look at that, pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you the process on the other side um, so I'm a little out of sorts here because I was so excited the way this was working that I forgot to video it. But I'll video the process on the other side and we'll be back. Even professional auto painters who paint hundreds of cars a year will get a run. It happens. 
uh, even with the best lighting and a you know state-of-the-art uh, downdraft booth you can still get runs you know you're laying that clear on and you're just you know you're laying it on there and you want it to just gloss out and you know you're putting on that extra coat and you're going to maybe a little slower than you than you should and it, it goes on and it's flowing out it looks beautiful and the next thing you know you gotta run it sucks but it does happen and it's not the end of the world so the way we're going to fix this is a, a trick that i uh, that i learned years ago and what we're going to do here is we're going to take a two-stage spot putty okay and it's important that it's two-stage it's got a hardener in it and spot putty has a very fine consistency so what we're going to do is you can see the run starts here we got a bit of a, a wave here and then you got the two the two drips so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a two-stage spot putty over the run covering the run okay and you want to concentrate and just stay locally on the run itself then we're going to let that cure about 20 30 minutes and come back and we're going to sand it off and you'll see how it works so let me go get my spot putty and i'll apply it and i'll show you how this is done okay so here we go we're going to mix up some spot putty and I'm going to go right over where our wave is see that And spot putty, the reason you want two stage is it's super fine. It's like the cream cheese <laughs> of spot putty. Or I shouldn't say that, it's like the cream cheese of Bondo. That's what it that's what I meant to say. So let's get this off here. We don't need it there. We don't really need it here. Okay, we're gonna let that cure. We're gonna be back in about 15 minutes or so. And we're gonna start sanding. You'll see, it'll be, it'll be like magic. Okay, so here I've started the process of sanding this. So basically I've got some 400 wet dry on a piece of paint stick. And we are just going to start sanding this. So, Notice that I am just keeping my sanding restricted to just where the spot putty is. Okay, I really don't want to go very much past that at all. If you go past it, it's just for feather edging, really. Right? And you can see. You can see how it's starting to thin out there. And uh, there's the top of one of my runs. So, you wanna keep this well lubricated, keep the paper clean and sharp. And uh, it's a little time consuming, but I really think it's the best way to do this because like I said pro painters guys that do this for a living they run stuff believe it or not they do even in a beautifully lit booth and best of everything lighting it happens because you're trying to lay a glass like finish and there's a lot of things that come into play. The temperature of the panel, the temperature of the paint, the reducer that you're using, the speed of the reducer, it all comes into play. And you can be a hardened professional doing this for 20 years and still run. But this process here is a lifesaver. So like I said, I saw this done years ago 
I was taught to me by an old guy. And uh, I remember when he was showing to me, I thought he was nuts. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Putting spot putty on a brand new panel. But it worked great. Okay, so I just got the edge of that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm moving on to a thousand. This is a thousand. This is a thousand grit. So first we'll go here. And the purpose of this is to obviously get rid of the 400 scratches. And as you can see, right now I'm keeping it just on the red. Now we're going to work on this portion here. And you can see I'm sanding past the 400, where I was using the 400. See now, there's a big edge here, and there's going to remain an edge because there was a lot of paint to get this effect, this two top, this two stage candy type effect. So you don't want to go through that clear. Okay, so we're gonna go over this whole panel here with the Trizac 1500. And you're not actually wet sanding, it's damp. Okay, so I just did this panel. What did I spend? A minute? Two minutes maybe? With some Trizac 1500 grit on my long throw uh, polishing sand. So you wipe off the residue. So all of this, there's no orange peel. It's gone. You can see it went down about here, right here. It's almost perfect. Down here, you can still see the orange peel, but it took like, what, a minute or two of, of light pressure sanding. And already, this is flat now. The other great thing here is, is that, you know, it points out all the little, got a little itty bitty pin thing here. And this is great because depending on how 
ridiculous you want to get. You could spend time sanding that out by hand, but this is awesome. What a, what a time saver, what a time saver. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit more here. Actually, I have to go over this with a thousand and then the 1500 will make that go away. That's where we use the 400 to sand out the run. So I'll do that and I'll be back. I'm gonna finish off this panel and we'll be back. We've been polishing uh, about, uh, got about three rounds of polish uh, polishing on it. Probably got about two more to go, but just wanted to share this, see how she's coming out. And as you can see, this Mazda color, this red soul crystal, I think is what it's called, is really, is really just really beautiful. I really think it came out really nice. So, and the second surprise is these are the these are the tires and rims that are going on it. Nitto Terra Grappler. I'm sorry, Nitto Ridge Grapplers. And uh, those are 38 by 13.5 by 22s. And those are uh, gear, uh, gear Alloy Slayer rims. And I, I saw these rims like a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I thought those are freaking awesome. They look like whirling hatchets or something. So had to have them. So we got them mounted and balanced by my buddies at work a whole bunch of them stayed late on friday to do this for me i didn't ask them they just volunteered i work with awesome people they're all interested in the project they ask me every day how it's going uh, they want to see the videos and they're just uh, some of the greatest people you ever want to meet you know mechanics sometimes get a bad rap but I'll tell you what, most of them are just, just a heart of gold. That's how those people generally are. They're just fantastic. It's a blessing to know them. So, uh, just wanted to show you, this is where we're at. And we're reassembling. We'll be back. Brotherhood of Dodge is more than cars, it's the trucks too. So, help a brother out by liking, subscribing, and sharing this channel as many places as you possibly can, whether it's groups, forums, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. My goal is to get the word out to as many people as possible that when these trucks rust, they can be saved. And I'm going to show you how to do it by yourself in your own garage. Thanks for your help, and see you next time.